Hey guys, and welcome to Phoenix Point. If you haven't heard of Phoenix Point, it's uh, it's very similar to XCOM, but boy does it have some big differences. And this has been developed by uh, a team including Julian Gollop, who was one of the original developers. In fact, he's like the original creator of the XCOM franchise. So it's kind of interesting to see his take on how XCOM should have developed. If you're not familiar with the storyline of the game, then this intro should fill you in and give you a general idea of what's to come. In what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. Okay, so basically the sea is spawning all kinds of mutant nasty creatures and they're coming to get you. <laughs> um, let's jump in and play and get a look at this game. So, new game. We'll play on Legend. <laughs> so this should last about five seconds. Start game. The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, Changed, hostile, alien. We should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose. New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world, and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning, and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. Okay, so this is the, the, the geoscape, and this is, uh, this is a map of the world, as you can quite clearly see. There's good old, good old Britain. Here's the US. And we start off over in, uh, where are we starting off? We're starting off, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the kind of Middle East. This, this is what, India, Pakistan. So, I don't know, like, is this Af like Afghanistan? It's got to be close. Okay, anyway, this is Phoenix Point. This is our base and this is the last, the last Phoenix Point base anywhere. Although, there may be others that have been abandoned that we can bring online. There are all kinds of um, unexplored sites all over the place. Oh yeah. And we are on board the Manticore. This is our ship. And with the ship we can fly around and explore and hopefully find out interesting and unusual things. 
we um, we can take a look at our base. Our base currently has a bunch of stuff in it. This is this is how you start. So you've got a medical bay, you've got a fabrication plant. Medical bay. This is where your uh, your soldiers will restore their hit points. Uh, the research lab. This is where you do your researching. Um, the energy generator, obviously. Now the the building is is pretty similar to XCOM, to be honest with you. And you start off with um, a certain amount of resources. You've got uh, 80 tech, 400 materials, and 150 food. But you can see the food is going down because we have to feed our soldiers. Food is also used to recruit new soldiers. So food is an important thing. And at the moment, we're not producing any. Right Now, we can go out and scavenge for it, but it's a good idea to actually produce some food. So we're going to build, uh, and the, it, it's very similar to XCOM in that we can't build here until we've built like here. So let's start the process. So we'll build some food production. Uh, it's going to take 200 materials and 40 tech. And it's going to take three days to build that. So we want to get that started early. So that's the base. Uh, research. Only one research available, atmospheric analysis. We've managed to connect it to some of the remaining weather satellites. We should use these to assess the extent of the new mist outbreak. Global mist monitoring system becomes available. Awesome. So let's queue that up. That's going to take six hours to get that done. If we have a look at manufacturing, manufacturing is where we build stuff. Again, very similar to uh, to XCOM. Uh, and we can, we can create equipment like med kits. Some of them are instant. Some of them take time to manufacture. Uh, we've got armor. And at the moment, we've only got the basic armor. So uh, the Banshee armor, this is for snipers. And then the Golem, this is for, uh, this is the heavy body armor. This is for our, for our heavies. And then the Odin, this is the, the basic armor for our assault class. So that's that. And then there are also the vehicles. Now, like big thanks to the people that uh, kickstarted this because one of the stretch goals was to put vehicles into the game. And I tell you what, having seen them in action, they're very, very cool. You will want to you will want to get vehicles and run around in those and smash things up. It's pretty awesome. Right, let's get back to the Geoscape. So what are we going to do? Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can go out and start exploring these unexplored sites or we can kick off uh, a scan, right? Now, we can kick off a scan because within our base, we've got, uh, where is it? The satellite uplink, which allows us to uh, link to the satellites. So let's go back to the geoscape and we'll kick one off. So we'll do, uh, we'll do an area scan and you'll see you get this green circle. And once I kick this off, it's gonna start spinning like radar and start expanding and it'll start revealing things. But let's kick it off and our research will start to happen while this is doing the scanning. Oh, and we've already done it, hooray. And we've now got new research available. So let's check out the new research. We've got the Phoenix Archives. Uh, we have discovered a batch of encrypted files on the mainframe of the newly reclaimed Phoenix base. According to the file names, uh, these are the Phoenix Archives or what remains of them. And in this, Haven Recruitment Protocols the leader of a reconnaissance team has proposed that we attempt to recruit capable people from the Havens. They might not share the technological know-how of Phoenix Project operatives, but they've been battle-hardened by the horrors of the world. We can, we will, once we've researched that, we'll be able to recruit soldiers from Havens. Cool. I think we'll do the, um, the Phoenix Archives first, and then we'll queue up the, uh, the Haven recruitment protocols. This is going to take one day, one hour. Let's go back. So the Havens, what the hell are the Havens? The Havens are basically Havens. They're sanctuaries. They're, they're places where people have, um, have gathered for protection. And there are three factions that we can encounter. Uh, and they have different abilities and different techs. And we want to become friendly with them. Now, we can now see where the mist is. And this is not good. Fighting in the mist. So like if we went down to this unexplored site and then we had an encounter, it's covered by the mist uh, and that makes things much, much more difficult. So rather than carrying on this scan, I think we should maybe try and move away a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to head up to this unexplored site here and we'll quickly explore that. 
Okay. Oh, enter Synedrian. Stage left. At the Synedrian haven of Catalonia, the situation is tense. Someone figured out that our open and democratic society, society would be easy to inter infiltrate and steal from. One of the Haven's uh, citizens tells our operatives. They pretended to join us, then they made off with some critical research, which I assume they want to sell to another faction. The citizen sighs. Uh, I, I said they made off, but the truth is they didn't get very far. In fact, they're stuck in the Haven, but as you can imagine, this is a strange situation. These people pretended to be our friends. They lived in Catalonia for months, all just to make a profit. I suppose old habits die hard. We could as uh, assist Synedrion with this problem. Now, we could, but we're not going to yet, because... There's other things that we need to do first. So we we won't do that. We'll, we'll, we'll do that later. Okay, so, but we've encountered our first, uh, our first haven, or our first, one of the factions, Synedrian. Right, let's, um, let's keep looking. Oh, can we, you know what? Let's see if we can get to this one before the mist gets there. And... Oh, we've been amp. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. What I was looking for was a nice, easy, um, well, easy. It's not easy, but a relatively easy um, scavenge mission. But instead, we've been ambushed. And I tell you what, this is not easy. We've got to survive three turns, and there's going to be a lot of things coming for us. The threat level is high. At least it's daytime. At night time, your, uh, your visibility, your perception uh, lowers, and that makes it even more difficult. Well, you know what? Let's do it. Let's jump in and do it. Cover will only protect soldiers from damage if it is hit by, an en by enemy fire instead of the soldier. Any shots hitting the soldier will still do full damage. Now, the combat system is quite different, um, particularly, or, or should I, I should say, to you aim and shoot. And, and how you hit or don't hit. Because it doesn't use the percentage chance that XCOM uses, uh, that we're all, we're all we're so familiar with and we love so much those 98% missed shots. The movement is very similar. You've got uh, action points, you've got four action points. And you can see on this bar here how many action points you've got. You can also see it below your mouse cursor as you move around. And this tells you how many action points you're gonna use up. So as, you, as we move out, you can see we're down to three action points. And then if we move into the next section, we're down to two action points. And then if we go outside that, we're down to one action point and then zero action points. All right, so shall we um, have a look? Oh, okay, so we've got, we've got two enemies right there. We've got another one over there. And these guys, are these the, I can't really see. Let's zoom down. Okay, I, I, that's that. That one's new to me. These are crab, crab men. They're kind of nasty. Uh, I don't know about these. They're like, they're like squids. Well, let's see what we can do. Now we've only got four guys, so okay. Let me show you the how the how the combat works. So if we um, we can see this guy. Okay, if I if I click on um, this or press F to fire a weapon, all right, it all looks like XCOM so far, right? Oh, this is it's called a Triton, this guy. Uh, if we um, zoom in, so we use the, the scroll wheel to zoom in, you can see that you get this reticle, okay? Now, if I just move to, to like there. Okay, so you've got an outer circle and an inner circle. 50% of your shots will land in the outer circle, 50% of your shots will land in the inner circle. And depending on how accurate you are, will depend on how big this circle is, right? So we are, we're a fair distance away from this guy, right? But if we got, um, for example, a sniper, now where's our, where's our sniper? There's our sniper. Uh, can you see that? Oh, you can see these guys, but you know what? If I, if I target this guy, and zoom in, you'll see his reticle is much, much smaller. Much, much smaller. So, we, like, he can target this guy's head quite easily. Whereas one of our assaults is going to probably going to be targeting, like, the whole thing. And that's the next thing which is diff different. You can target specific body parts. So, for example, if we took out this guy's head, then uh, he would start bleeding 
and taking 10 bleed damage per turn. He, he would lose 12 willpower. He would lose um, 10 of his maximum hit points. His maximum hit points are at the top of the screen. And it would also remove one of his abilities, which is double perception. So if we take, took out his leg, for example, it removes his movement. Uh, sorry, it limits his movement. Um, again, causes him to bleed. Most of the time, if you disable one of the limbs, then um, one of the body parts, it, it'll, it'll cause bleeding. So that... That is how things are very different. And I love this new combat system. This, this is how XCOM's com, uh, combat system should work. None of this percentage chance rubbish. This is so much better. Because if you're point blank, then you're going to hit the damn thing. And I love that. All right. So, um, so let's see. Our four guys, what can we do? We've got... Well... This guy's the first guy we want to deal with, I suppose. So, now you can see him. Now, you can fire twice in a round. Uh, one of these assault rifles uses up two action points. We've got four action points, so I could shoot at this guy twice. And I think that's probably the way to go. So, I think we'll, I think we'll do this. Now, you can, you can just let it auto-target for you, so you don't have to zoom in. So if I, if I just go like that, it automatically targets it, right? And just puts it pretty much center mass. But it's, um, it's kind of much better to zoom in and decide exactly like where you want the bulk of your shots to be landing or, you know, do you, like, do you want to waste shots above the target or below the target? You know, for example, if I waste shots above the target, well, that's not going to do anything. But shots below the target might hit cover and destroy it, which um, will make my next shot better. Uh, and, like, do I want to target the legs to try and limit the movement? That kind of thing. I think we want to go fairly centre, but I kind of want to slightly bias the head. So let's do it. Right. Wasn't one shot. Oh no. These assault rifles fire six shots. Each one does 20 damage if it hits. So we got a bunch of hits on him. Awesome. Um, I think we'll get a second round in. Now let's see. Okay. He lost an arm and he's bleeding. So that's good news. Let's see if we can't get some headshots in. So where am I going to go? About there. Do it. Boom. Okay. That, not bad. Not bad. He's, um, he's taking, uh, 30 bleed damage. So, he's going to be, um, he's going to be, he's probably going to be dead <laughs> next turn. Yeah. So, what can we do about the two guys over this side? Okay, well, we want to look for cover. Now, cover works completely differently to um, to XCOM. In XCOM, it just changes your percentage chance. But in this game, um, as you can see, hiding behind cover, well, he wasn't, well, he was kind of sort of behind a little bit of cover. Cover actually acts as cover. So, it's a much more realistic system. I really like this combat system. So I'm thinking maybe we move you over to there. Now this is our this is our sniper carrying the um, the Firebird sniper rifle. Now I can move you a short distance and get a shot off. So but I can't move you into any decent cover. So I think maybe the the, the problem is if I move you to there, the cover actually stops me seeing these guys. So if I move to there, if, if you see the the two blue lines, that's showing me that I can I've got line of sight to these two targets. If I move to there, I've got no line of sight. Same if I move to there, I can see this target over here, but can't see these targets over here. So cover w works kind of both for you and against you. So on that basis, I think there's nowhere useful that you can really move to. This guy, this crab guy is a melee, so I don't think, I don't think he's going to present us with too many problems. So I think we'll just take the shot, 
and we'll save the extra action points and maybe move into cover afterwards. So, who am I going to take out? Probably the crab guy, to be honest, because these guys, they can use their, their carapace as a shield, but it's not deployed at the moment, so I should be able to get a decent shot on this guy with a bit of luck. So, let's see. Oh, that's nasty, because he's behind there. Now, I, I've got a fairly good shot on his head. Uh, I'm not going to kill him in one round. If you look up at the top, you can see the... Um, so, you, you see the red area and the, and the white area. The white area is the amount of damage that we're going to do. So, this is going to do 110 damage. But, if I can um, take out his head, then he's going to be bleeding. He's only going to have 20 hit points. So, two turns, he's going to be dead anyway. And also... If we, um, if we take out his head, it removes his ability spit poison, and that would be very, very good news. So we've got a 50% chance, really, of uh, getting into the, the center reticle. So probably overall, we've got about a 65 70% chance of taking him down. I think it's worth the shot, personally. But I am thinking, like, if I moved to the side, could I improve the, the shot? Um, like if I like if I move to there, yeah, this isn't going to be in the way. I'm going to have a better shot at him. So you know what? Let's do that. Let's move to. Ah, see, that's not going to give me any cover. It's the only problem. But I don't want to miss this shot. So I think it's probably worth. What about there? Now, move to there. Get the best shot in. So, go for it. Preparing to fire. Alright, let's take this guy's freaking brain stem out. Go. Oh, yeah! Beautiful shot. Okay, so, we've taken out his head. He's bleeding. He's going to be dead in two turns anyway, if we don't kill him otherwise. Right, so that leaves us with uh, one assault and our heavy. Now... Our heavy is kind of interesting. Um, he's got very, very limited movement because of the weight of his armor. But one thing that he does have is um, jump jets or jet jump. <laughs> uh, and that allows him to move uh, anywhere within 20 tiles. But it uses up will points. Now, will points are, um, um, yeah, I guess it's kind of sort of willpower-y thing. Uh, and you do regenerate willpower, uh, like killing it, like killing off enemies and whatever will help people regenerate uh, willpower. You've also got um, strength, which is their uh, affects how much they can carry before they're encum encumbered, uh, and thus uh, when when you're they're encumbered, it, um, it it slows down their movement rate and uh, speed, which uh, determines like how far they can move. So now this guy has the um, the hell cannon. Which is an awesome weapon if you get relatively close with it. Because it, it ain't all that accurate. Now I'm thinking, now if we move up to there, we can get a shot on this guy. But I don't think he's going to do a whole hell of a lot. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move up there so that we've got, we've got some cover. And then we're going to put him into Overwatch. And the Overwatch, you're going to love. But let me, um, let me see what I can do with this assault first. So, I'd really love to get a hit on this guy. So what I'm thinking is to move up. Ugh, can't really. Now I can move to there and I, I could probably take out that guy. Uh, maybe that's the smart move. There's definitely nothing else around that we can see at the moment. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. There's only those three that we can see at the moment. But more are going to be coming. So go on, we'll move up. And we'll take that guy, hopefully, out. So. Now, you can. this is a great example. Of, of, you can see how cover works. I've only got a very, very small amount of this guy that I can hit. But I've got six shots. I'm probably going to hit him two, maybe three times. Because 50% will be in that center circle. So maybe two shots. If I get two shots on him, um, 
It is going to subtract his armor, which is uh, on the top right hand side. So he's got 15 armor. Hitting the carapace isn't going to help too much. So, hmm. Do I want to take him? Or should we do some Overwatch? I think maybe I'd be better off trying some Overwatch. I mean, the guy's going to die anyway. So this is how Overwatch works. You put into Overwatch, you get this arc that you can extend. Also, if you if you hold the control key and scroll, then you can narrow or widen the arc that you're covering. So I think we'll say anything that moves in that arc, shoot it. Now, our heavy... I'm kind of wondering about our heavy, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, he, he, for him to do any good, he needs to really be up front. So I'm kind of tempted to just move him out here. Especially if we can tempt this guy to rush him. Uh, heavies are your tanks. They're the guys who should be out there absorbing the damage. So go on, let's... Uh, yeah, let's move you out there into cover. Sprinting go. Position. Enemy in visual range. Oh, well, that's as far as he could move. All right. Oh, no. No, he spotted the enemy. That's why he stopped. I was going to say, why didn't you move? Go and move out there. But you've spotted a new enemy, haven't you? Uh, do I want to end the turn? Yes, it's fine, because I can't do anything about it now. Okay. Okay. He missed. Good. Okay. He's triggered the overwatch. Oh, nicely done. Okay, that worked well. Okay, we've got another guy. See, he's just deployed his shield. He is going to be difficult to hit, and we've got another guy coming this way. Oh, okay. Took damage. That was nasty. And we've got another guy coming this way. Seriously, ambushes are really bad news. Okay, let's see what we can do. Now, fortunately, my heavy... Having moved him out there, he's going to be in a great position for this guy. Alright, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's deployed his shield against that guy. And this weapon does 160 to 180 damage. Basically, if you hit, you pretty much kill anything. So, should we do it? I think we should, um, I think we should probably do it. Uh, let's zoom in on this guy. So, where do we want? Center mass. Do it. Boom. Bye bye. <laughs> PG. Wiped him out. Good job. Good job, Mr. Heavy. All right. So, what does that leave us with? We've got this creepy dude out here who's going to die anyway. So, we don't have to worry about him. I thought he was going to die last round, but he's definitely going to die this round. Then we've got this guy who's deployed his shield. And this guy. Is that it? Zoom out a bit. Yeah, it looks like it's just those two that we've got to worry about now. Awesome source. Okay. Ah, uh, these guys. These guys are a pain. They really are. Um, I don't have to worry about him. So, I'm thinking... See, really, you want to flank these guys because these shields will really soak up the, the damage. Um, that's not going to do us much in the way of cover. Uh, what can my sniper do? My sniper should have a decent shot on that guy. You know what? Let's do, let's do the sniping first. So, let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's got 180 hit points though, but we will do a serious amount of damage. Alright, let's zoom in. Headshot. Okay, so we'll remove his ability double perception and cause him to bleed. So, uh, just about there would be good. Yeah. Boom, got him. Headshot. Oh no, he disabled the torso. Hit him in the torso. But, it still disabled his torso, so he is now bleeding. The, the, the only problem with the sniper is that his weapon uses three action points. But, I can now, if I want to, move him into cover. So, you know what, right let's there. move you just to the side, so you're in cover against that guy. Uh, now, do I do 
another overwatch or do I try and move in and finish this guy I don't think I can actually oh I don't know from there I could maybe oh that's kind of tempting yeah I probably couldn't finish him but it's gonna be close what about if I don't really want to move towards this guy too much though is the, the only thing what about from like there there he doesn't have a shot, there he does. Um, there you've got a shot on that guy. But he's shielded, which is not good. The thing is, we want to get this guy in a bit of a crossfire. So maybe moving up there. See, uh, it's not going to be... That puts him too close to that guy, I think. So I still think that's the best bet. Yeah, go on. Let's move. move there and let's take this shot. Zoom in. Oh, come on. Come on, a nice headshot. Go. Okay, we did 60 damage. He is almost toast. Uh, it's going to take a couple of rounds for him to bleed out. He's got 30. It'll take three rounds for him to uh, to bleed out. Okay, that leaves us with... Uh, let's see. So, you will put into standby mode because he's got no action points left. Uh, you have got no action points left, so we'll put you into standby as well. Uh, now, you have got action points. What do we do with you? I think maybe... We put you into Overwatch. How about we move you... Let's see, do I move you up? Yeah, if I move you up to there. Now we put you in Overwatch. On that area there. So, if when he drops his shield and moves, hopefully we can take him down. But I'm, I think I'm going to narrow this slightly. Because the thing is, I want to get him when he's not really behind this crate, but... So I, I, I could narrow it even further. Go on, I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Okay, so we're covering that area just in there. Okay, that leaves our sniper who can't do anything. Stand by. Do you want to end the turn? Yes I do. Okay, he bled out and died. Good. He is bleeding out. Did get a shot off, but he didn't do anything. Good. And you, you drop your shield and you run straight into the path. Oh, beautiful. Good shooting. But, oh, headshot. Ouch. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's really not good. But hey, it is what it is. Um, to be honest, if we, if we just survive this, I'll be happy. I'll be honest with you. Right. I think... Now, you can get out here and flank this guy. So I think that's what you should do. Um, yeah, you've got ammo. Yeah, move. Do it. Just get out there. And, and as you can see, when I zoom in, you'll see. Right. Look, look how small the reticle is. So I could, I could pick what I wanted to take out. It's, uh, can I get a headshot? Oh, yes, I can. So let's let's blow his freaking head off. Oh, head there. Yes. How much nicer is that than XCOM? Like seriously. Okay, that leaves us with this guy who he's going to bleed out next turn anyway. Where's our sniper? Our sniper should be able to get even behind cover. Although what I might do, you know what? Cuz you might be able to take down take out some of that cover. So let's have a shot with you first. You might even kill him. You might even kill him. Go for it. Oh. Oh yeah. Peachy. Okay. I'm just wondering whether I should... Uh... Well, we've only got to survive one more turn. 
Um, I'm just looking to see, you know what, I might move him, like just, in, just in case anything shows up. Move to there. Our sniper can stay where he is, because he's in, he's in a good, good spot there. Um, hmm, I'm going to do something with my heavy. You know what, I, I don't think, I don't think I need to do anything. So, I think we just end the turn. Oh no. <laughs> Two more crab guys. Oh, and, oh, now, those guys, those little guys, where are they? They're called uh, Mind Flayers, I think. Let's have a look at you. Mind Fragger, Mind Fragger. And basically, they, they're they kind of like face hookers from Alien. They just leap onto your head and um, basically suck your brain out. So they're, they're pretty damn nasty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have survived enough turns. So I could just evac. Uh, which I've got to say is a pretty tempting option. So just get the hell out of here. So, where is everybody? So, you're there. Where's the, my sniper's the guy that I'm kind of not worried about. I, part of me just wants to blow their freaking heads off. You've got a shot on that guy. You're not going to have much of a shot on him. So this is the thing. Little, just a little bit of low cover like that can make life very, very difficult. Um, we've got good cover from there, but these are all... Um, I think these are all Malays, apart from the poison spit. So maybe... Do we take them down, or do we evac? No, you know what? Run away! Run away! Yeah, get over there. Uh, where's my sniper? Sniper. Uh, that's the E back. So let's get you all the way over there. Let's just get the hell out of it because ambushes, not fun, not fun at all. Uh, let's move you out. Maybe. You know what? I'm going to move you out probably as far as I can move you. Go. I'm on the wolf. Yep. Go. He's bleeding out. Oops. I should have used a med kit on him. Oops. Uh, and you're not going to be... Well, unless I use a jet jump. Let's see. Let's have a look at this guy. You've got 23 hit points. You're bleeding out turn and turn. I can get you out next turn. So, no, you're going to survive. You're going to be all right. Now, this guy, I could jump him out, but I think we'll, um, we'll try and move as a team if we can. Let's move you out to there. Go. All right. Oh, here they come. Deployed his shield. Oh, we've got another guy over there that I didn't spot. Yeah, I I'm so glad that I didn't stick around to try and fight these guys. It's like, run. Survive your three turns and run the hell away. All right, let's get... Uh, this you're bleeding out. Let's get you the hell out of there, ASAP. Um, let's move you over there. Cool. And it's going to take you two turns to get out. Good grief. Okay. You get to there. Now, our sniper... Even our sniper can't make it. You know, I'm looking at him. He's in trouble. He is in trouble. Go. And you. Go. Oh, I hope we can evac before this guy dies. Uh, do you want to end the turn? Yes. And. Okay, here comes the, the mind fragger. You can see that funnel, that's what he wraps around your head. Oh, he's going to get a shot in. Oh, no! 
No! One of our guys died! Ah! I t oh, man. I thought he would evac. But he didn't. Okay, well, here's what it is. Next time. So... You get out there. And... Moving. You. And... You. Okay. So... Cyber Zones, evacuate everybody. Except you. Are you. Well, are you... Are you still alive? I don't know if he's still alive or not. Evacuate. I should have clicked on evacuate before. Evacuate. And... No. He's toast. Man. That was so unnecessary. But he's, yeah, he's, he's dead. I could have saved it. If I'd have, if I'd have clicked on evac, he would have been safe. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. But hey, you know, that's, um, that's XCOM. Or in this case, that's Phoenix Point. So there you go. Well, we survived the ambush. We recovered a grenade. We recovered some uh, some ammo, an assault rifle ammo, some assault rifle ammo, some um, an assault rifle, uh, some Odin body armor, an Odin helmet. Oh, uh, most of this is coming off the dead body. <laughs> oh, that's a damn shame. But hey, oh well. There you go. That is a little first look at uh, Phoenix Point. And how good is it? I think it's damn good. You should definitely check it out. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I will catch you for the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.